Hello. How you doing? I am hopping on tonight. I had no plans of hopping on tonight, but felt like painting and I didn't feel like painting alone. So here I am. <laughs> I also have a fun, um, fun little reveal unboxing, so to speak, to do. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see who hops on. TikTok was kind of like crazy town today. Um, my account went down. I couldn't log into either of my accounts. And I, I didn't know what was going on. So I actually ended up deleting and reinstalling and then losing all of my drafts, which was not good. Kind of bummed out about that. Um, way to go, TikTok. So, anyway, I'm probably gonna flip this around. I'm just gonna start painting. I'm actually filming. I'm going working on two devices tonight and I'm filming on the other device. I'm trying to like work and be live and chit chat. So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna flip this around and try to get a good angle here. I have another device, so I wanna make sure it's not. Hey friends, I just flipped the camera around. I'm doing something pretty insane tonight. I'm actually trying to paint and film what I'm painting while I'm live here with you, so ha. Huh. Bear with me. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So I'm getting this set up. We'll see what happens. I can zoom this in a little bit. Anybody else lose their account access earlier? Cause I sure did. It was kind of a whole thing of bum me out because I lost all of my um, drafts and it was just a holy hot mess. So I'm glad y'all are hopping on. I already flipped the camera around so bear with me. Um, I do have a fun reveal for tonight so I'm excited about that. Hopefully I'm going to start painting here. I'm just setting up my station and getting things going. Um but hopefully you'll kind of stick around with me for a little bit because I'm going to reveal my brushes, y'all. My brushes came in, um, not the full quantity, but uh, my manufacturer sent me a, like a finished sample. So basically they plucked one of the brush sets from the whole thing and sent me that so um the sample i had prior to this was not perfect and it the all the details weren't like they're supposed to be but literally this is what the brush set is going to look like when you get it from amazon this is going to have the plastic packaging and this is my skew like look i have my own skew isn't that fun um so exciting so anyway but i am going to paint but i'm going to paint with the brushes so let's have a looky-loo. I'm going to zoom out um, so you can see that. If you're just hopping on, friends, and you're new here, my name is Christy Rice. Tonight was an impromptu live. I didn't schedule it. I am watercolor obsessed. You, um, I am your unofficial tour guide to watercolor TikTok, and I want to welcome you. Um, I believe in making art for joy's sake. And I believe in a very specific way of painting, a kind of a different approach. And so, yeah, I'm glad you're here. So let's dive into this bad boy and then I'm gonna paint with these, right? So this is, this is she. <laughs> so this is my brush set. I'm gonna be launching it on Amazon. Um, oh, this thing is like, I'm actually live from my iPad. Can anybody tell me how the quality is? Is the image quality okay? Because I'm usually not on my iPad 
while I'm streaming. So let me know. So anyway, when this arrives to you from Amazon, this is what it's going to look like. And then I feel like this pouch is bigger than the other one, but I guess it's not. Oh yeah, it is. Look at that. It's actually a little bigger. I mean, whatever. It's not a bad thing. Bigger is not a bad thing. And then the brush set slides out. There she is. There she is, friends. There she is. So, um, this is a little bit changed since the last time, the last sample that I had and I've been showing. Um, but it's a six brush set and it's literally everything you need for painting watercolor in a efficient, joyful, instinctive way. Um, you have your three quarter inch flat wash brush, which I lovingly call the unshakable joy brush. You have your forget rules brush, which is a drum roll half inch dagger. Then you have the queen bee of them all, the brush that started it all, the quarter inch dagger that I call the art for joy sake brush. And we have the cat's tongue, the watercolor curious number one cat's tongue. Thanks for popping on guys. I'm not sure how the connectivity is tonight. I'll tell you what, I my account was down for several hours. And, um, but now that even though I'm back, YouTube's wonky, or YouTube, hi, we're on TikTok. TikTok is wonky. So hopefully you can hear and see all this. Um, and next we have the number two round, which is the happy painting brush. And then last but certainly not least, is the uh, number one liner brush, and that is the Remember Joy brush. So this brush set is going live on Amazon um, next month. So, or possibly end of this month, we have to see. Um, Amazon launches a crazy town, so we have to see. Um, but here I am, and um, when you purchase the brush set, you're gonna get access to this QR code that's going to take you to an exclusive unlisted YouTube tutorial. You're gonna learn all about how to use these brushes and how it all works. So I'm pretty jazzed about that. All right, so let's get painting. I'm actually not gonna paint with this set because this is my set for photography. So I'm gonna go back to my sample set which I've been painting with for weeks. I'm gonna grab those now. But yeah, I wanted to show this to y'all. I wanted you to be the first to see. Um, I've had it for a few days now and I've just kind of let it sit there and I've stared at it and marveled at it and I wanted to open it live. And so this is the first moment I had with the holiday and everything, just crazy sound. Uh, so, yay, thank you for being here for all that. All right, friends, I'm going to start painting. I'm going to put these away. I've been doing a special series um, <coughs> over on Instagram. My account there is the same name, Christy the Painter. And um, I've been posting, I kind of feel like my Instagram friends get the short end of the stick in a lot of ways because I post everything here first. <laughs> And so for the month of July, it's World Watercolor Month, I decided to um, create some exclusive content for my, uh, my Instagram peeps. And so I've been posting some of it here, but only after I post it there first. All right, friends, I'm going to use, I can't help it, I'm going to go back, oh my Lord, get those children to bed. Um, I'm going to go back to my new case for making palette I love this beauty. So I'm gonna use that tonight. I'm using Academy watercolors, uh, watercolor paper. So you have a look at that. I'm spraying the watercolors cause I want to get them all nice and juicy. Can y'all hear me? I don't see any comments and I know TikTok is having a moment today. So just wanna make sure y'all can hear me. Can somebody say, hey, hey, I can hear you. All right. And I'm going to get going here. As I mentioned, I'm going to be filming. I literally have my camera like right here, my other device. So I'm going to start filming. Any requests? 
to, for what I paint tonight, friends. Let me know if you have a request. I would love to make that happen for you. If I don't get any requests in the next like 15 seconds, I'm just gonna start something. Gonna take a drink. All right, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna do some lavender. Let's get her done. I'm hitting record. Going for it. All right. Using the cat's tongue kind of at a slight angle, I would say about like, I don't know, definitely not a 45 degree angle, but, and I am going to use a couple different purples straight from this palette, and I'm creating kind of an impressionistic lavender shape using little brush strokes kind of two brush strokes fanning out from one another. Let me show you that again. One, two, pressing down a little bit harder on one or the other. Two, one, two, one, two. If you want your lavender to kind of curve, you can start the curve. You can make your lavender stock longer. Just press a little harder because naturally your lavender is gonna be a little fuller um, at the bottom, you can use a couple different purples if you want. You can use one purple. There you go. Let's do it again. One, two, one, two. One of my videos here that went viral, um, several comments said, Christy, you should be, you should be a doula. One, two. <laughs> they said I sounded like I was coaching someone through birth. Um, but to me, that was a compliment <laughs> because that meant that um, I, I think that meant I was being very encouraging. So hopefully that is, is what they meant. That's where I'm going to go with that one and leave it at that. So I'm mixing together a little bit of a blue and a fluorescent pink. Oh, heck yeah. I'm not mixed. I didn't mix it too hard. I just kind of loaded each. Um, color onto my brush and then went for it. I can, um, I'll pull the palette over and show you what that looks like in a moment. But literally dip into the blue, dip into the fluorescent, come back to the page and do your one, two, one, two. Like, I'm not kidding. I know that sounds crazy. If you've been with me for a while, you know, you know I don't mix traditionally. I'm pressing really hard here and I'm doing just one, 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 one. This is the other way you could do the lavender, right? So yeah, I am not much of a mix your paint on the palette type of gal. So if you're new here, welcome to my world. It's a lovely place to be. Just gonna see if there's any comments here. I don't wanna miss anything. Y'all are quiet tonight. Quiet. Oh my gosh, y'all are usually not this quiet, but it's okay. I'm here because you know what? I'm just going to keep rambling and talking because I'm really good at that. And if you want to talk to me, I'm here for it. If you just want to watch, I'm also here for it. I'm going to use the very tip. I'm almost holding it perpendicular now and start to make some wispy. Well, that wasn't as wispy as I'd hoped. Um, stems and carry that stem, that green a little bit up through the lavender bits. Right? Beautiful. Oh, that's pretty. This is very impressionistic. This isn't, you know, necessarily a realistic attempt at lavender. Keep going here. One, two. So a little bit of a heavier hand, meaning a little more pressure at the bottom of the lavender stock. Bigger strokes. But with when you add more pressure, your strokes will automatically, oh, I went off the screen, sorry y'all. Um, 
So maybe I didn't go off the screen up there. Remember, I'm recording. I'm recording what I'm doing here for a different project. <laughs> so I have two devices going. This is crazy town. So more pressure, you're going to get a bigger stroke. Less pressure, watch, less pressure, less pressure, less, less, even less, almost to nothing. Repeat on this side, and I'm curving my brush as I go. See what I did there? I made a stroke like here, and then I'm holding my brush like this, and then I flipped the brush in my hand. You have to remember that. Your brush doesn't always have to be held in one angle in one direction, right? It's a beautiful thing. Switch it up, y'all. Switch it up. Boom. Switch, switch, switch. You don't have to create these one, two, one, two brush strokes the same way. You do not have to hold your brush the same way throughout. In fact, I'd recommend that you don't hold your brush the same way throughout. Because you're trying to recreate, give an impression of what Mother Nature created, what God created, right? And everything in nature is organic and a little bit different and a little bit unique. There's repetition, sure, but there's repetition with innovation. And so you want to do the same thing. You want to have repetition, but innovation with your brush strokes. And how do you innovate your brush strokes? Change the angle, change the way you hold your brush. All right, let's get some lavender leaves. Lavender leaves, at least the lavender variety I have growing in my yard, are kind of long and skinny and spindly and they curve and, and kind of tangle around one another. So we're gonna do a little bit of that. Let me walk, let me walk you through what I'm doing here. Almost perpendicular to the page, start with the point, press down, but not too much, and drag and start to lift up. Nice and long, long slender. Let's do that again. Press down, drag, lift up, curve a little even if you want. And I'm gonna make a little bit of a, a skinny stem at the bottom of that. Adding a little shading there. See how that works? Just lovely. Simple, clean. You can go the opposite way. Start with very little pressure and then add pressure as you go, then lift up. See how I did that? Opposite works too. And it gives a little bit of a different personality to the leaf when you go opposite. Load your brush up with different colors. Don't feel like you have to repeat the same colors over and over again. In fact, I recommend that you don't. Adding different greens to your brush as you work creates a really good, gorgeous kind of unique natural organic vibe I added a little orange to my green look at that isn't that lovely Ooh, I like that I'm gonna pop up see if there's any questions hey friends this is, yay, I'm so glad you're here. I am using a cat's tongue. This is my cat's tongue. I revealed the brushes at the beginning of the live. Um, I can do it again. I got my actual true samples from the manufacturer. So this is a cat's tongue. So it's a lot like a dagger. Here's the dagger, this one. And the cat's tongue's next to it. The cat's tongue is just pointed in the middle. So the point is in the middle instead of off to one side. Thanks so much for being here, friends. I'm so grateful. I'm painting some lavender. I've got two devices running like a crazy person because I'm actually filming what I'm painting for you here tonight. All right, now. I'm gonna get kind of a dark purple stock back here. See how that feels. Let it go off the page a little. Kind of let it go behind this brighter one. That's pretty, enough of that though. It's getting a little heavy. Talk yourself through your painting. Talk to yourself. I talk to myself all the time. 
as I paint. I'm making these strokes on this one a little bit longer. You see that? They're a little bit longer. Kind of elegant. I like that. I'm not a big fan of this one, so I'm going to do a little bit of uh, going over top of it, defining a little bit more. I like really what happened with these strokes here, so I'm going to change it up a little. But yeah, talk yourself through these paintings. Motivate yourself. Say nice things to yourself, okay? I know it sounds insane, but I encourage folks um, to talk to themselves as, as they paint. It's way too easy to say all the nasty things to ourselves, right? All the negative junk. So easy to talk ourselves down. Well, form some habits and talk yourself up. Make that the thing that's easy to do, right? I'm getting the liner brush and I'm gonna start to do some really thin kind of sketchy work. Like I'm almost drawing with the paintbrush. I love doing this. I'm going to paint something new. Friends, do you have a request? I'm going to be doing some quick, like rapid fire painting tonight. So if you have any requests, let me know. It's a little project I've got going on for Instagram, but um, I'll show you a couple that I've been working on that are going to be going on Instagram. Um, if you were here earlier, you might have heard me say, but I'll, I'll review, I'll go over it again. So I kind of feel like my Instagram friends get the, get, get the, uh, the shaft a little bit. So I, I'm doing an exclusive to them first content thing this month of July to celebrate World Watercolor Month. I just did these, um, oh my gosh, what are these called? Oh, lantern, something, lanterns. Oh, I forget, whatever. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. Um, did this rose, sorry about the, the, um, the focusing is really weird on this device. I don't know why. Uh, cactus. I did this kind of abstract landscapey thing, which was fun. Leaves. I just posted this one today on Instagram, and I posted it here as well. But I posted it on Instagram first because they're getting the first look. And then this one's coming up, just a sketchy on black piece. Really fun. So that's what I'm filming tonight as we're, we're painting live here together. So let's see, what should we do? What should we do? Love that abstract landscape. Thank you, it was really fun. It was really fun to create. And I, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do when I started it. So it's kind of fun to like let it evolve and let it happen. All right, let's see. What are we going to do? What are we going to do next? Um, oh, I have zinnias. I have zinnias here. I'm going to do with zinnia. Oh, that's cutting in on my view. Can't do that. All right, well, I'll show you the zinnia. I'm gonna do that. All right. Let's do it. And you 
know I'm going to go fluorescent with this bad boy. You just know. Whoop, smudgy. Oh, well. All right. I got to have this in in front of me. I do like to have something in front of me for reference. Um, man, my lighting is weird tonight. I'm getting a ton of shadows. Hmm, bummer. Why am I getting so many shadows? Anyway. So I started at the outside of the petal and I curve and I'm lifting as I curve. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna be pulling different colors directly from my palette. Remember, no mixing. I'm gonna change the angle of my brush as I go. Hopefully you can kind of get a vibe for what I'm doing here as this starts to take form. And I'm thinking about the center. I'm leaving the center open as I go. A little bit too much pigment on my brush. I'm gonna lighten this up a bit. So this is kind of my center, right? And just keep going round and round. Go ahead and some, some center detailing. Start the magic there. And what do we got going on here? Some more yellow. Lift out some of that yellow. It's a little strong. Rinse the brush. And let's get back to the flower petals. I'm not looking to recreate reality. I'm looking to embellish on reality. Make it a little more fun and wow and exciting. Now I'm going in between, creating the under petals. You can start to see this take shape. My brush has got orange on it. I'm going right into yellow. Look at that. Nice. Friends, I'm popping up every so often, so if you are leaving comments, I, I don't see them as quickly as I normally do because the camera's above my head and I'm filming with the other device, so bear with me. I will be popping up to take a looky-loo, see what you're saying, if anything. It's been kind of quiet tonight, so I have to say in general, um, I'm using a dark brown and starting to add some detail here with the tip of this cat's tongue um, but in general TikTok's been a little quieter these days um, I'm, I'm guessing it's because the world is opening back up hooray hooray um, and people are out there living life hooray hooray again um, but yeah TikTok has been really quiet the lives have been quiet anybody else noticing that I don't know Maybe people just don't like me anymore. I am kind of a lot. <laughs> All right, let's go in with the half inch dagger and do a big old leaf because these zinnia leaves are pretty, pretty, pretty uh, intense and large. Go in with the tip, press down, wiggle a little, drag it out, lift up. Grab a different green and start to Complete this shape. I gotta get some zing in here. Really nice, light, and airy green. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Paint's running out. That's okay. Don't panic. I've got this pretty icy blue I'm gonna pop in. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Ooh, pretty. I like that so much. I like how that dark, granular 
granulating pigment, that green is blending into this icy blue and just making happy. I'm gonna pop in a little bit of this creamy yellow, see what happens. Okay, a little bit of water in there to blendy blend. Okay, but let it do its thing. Don't try to overwork it too much. Let it do its thing. I'm gonna go in here and just cut this shape in a little bit more specifically. Mm hmm Pretty. Pressing down, wiggling, twisting. Remember, your brush is your tool. It's like an extension of your arm. Don't be rigid with it. Twist it, wiggle it. Mm. Now your leaf, this big leaf, he's wet. So go in, dab in some color. You're gonna see what I'm about to do and you're gonna be shocked. I'm grabbing some fluorescent pink and dragging that in. Don't panic, it's a good thing, it's interesting, it's exciting. A little bit of orange, fluorescent orange on the edge here for a highlight. Oh yes I did. Yes, yes I did. Ah, so good. You hear that? You Hopefully you don't think I'm being like conceited. I have learned, I have developed the habit of saying nice things to myself, of complimenting myself. That is a learned habit in my painting, um, my painting style, because I've learned that if I can be kind to myself, ooh, I had a little purple on the underbelly of that brush. Talk about a happy accident, holy moly. Anyway, I'm gonna soften that just a bit, but not too much. Ooh, glorious. See, I did it again. Get in the habit of complimenting yourself. I talked about that a little bit tonight on my most recent post. And it's a way that you can learn to accept the joy that you've got coming to you with this painting thing. You actually have to train yourself to feel joy, to experience joy. Sometimes it happens, don't get me wrong. Sometimes joy that's unplanned and lovely happens. But there's so much untapped joy because we're busy worrying about other stuff that we don't even notice. So I've given you some tips and, and tricks for training yourself to be able to recognize joy, to be able to harness it and really feel it when it comes your way. Really cool stuff. All right, I'm gonna pop up in my chair here and see if there's any comments. Try not to be heartbroken if there's not. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna fill in a little bit more here. These zinnias are from my mama's garden. I never grow zinnias. She always grows them, so I always beg her to give me some. I don't have to beg her. She'll give me anything I ask her for. She's the best. I don't know why I started putting in violet, but I'm kind of glad I did. Feels kind of crazy and, and natural all at the same time in this little zinnia situation. Not that bad, I don't like what I just did there. I'm gonna cover that up. All right, let's see where we're at. Those leaves are blending so nicely, thank you. Yeah, see it's quiet again here on the TikTok, but that's all right. Oh dear. My new chair is starting to make the horrible noises that my old chair was making, which is kind of scary because if my new chair does what my old chair did, I'm going to be on the floor soon. Oh, I'm going to grab that liner brush and we're going to do some line work in this. You have to have the right 
right amount of water on that brush for the lines to really flow. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to show you something. Look at the that little detailing in the middle of the zinnia. It's got like, it's like a flower within a flower. So I want to include that somewhere in this painting and I feel like as an accent flower that's inspired by the zinnia middle might be really fun. So let's see how this goes. Let me do a little accent down here. different yellows and just little wispy strokes. I'm going to put little centers on them to define them. But look at that. Oh, that's fun. Don't make them all the same. Curve some of the petals a little more than others. Make some tiny, tiny. Make some bigger. And just make a little cluster. And again, I'm inspired by the center of this zinnia. Look at those little flowers within the flower. It's just so cool and I I don't have much of that happening in the actual flower. Maybe I can kind of retroactively make that happen. Cover up some of this brown and then I can go back in. I'm going to see what I can do there but in the meantime while that center's drawing from what I just added to it, I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this little accent cluster. Something I love to think about when it comes to composition, I get asked about composition a lot. Um, the key to exciting compositions is mindful repetition throughout the page, but um, thinking about scale. You don't want all the elements of a painting to be the same size, the same shape, the same texture. You really want to vary those elements. Now, don't think I'm cray-cray, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some centers to these little beauties, and I'm using violet because I know that these dots are so small, and if I use black or brown, it's just going to be black or brown. But using a violet adds just a little bit of spice that isn't, like, in your face. Trust me. It's lovely. I'll put some little petals in here. I didn't even really need these little petals. They're kind of, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about those little petals. Friends, my new book, I've got a lot going on this month. I feel like a complete embarrassment of riches in terms of just everything that I've got going on. My new book, um, Spirited Watercolor, How to Make Art for Joy's Sake, is um, starting to ship from Amazon July 27th. Um, keep an eye out because I am working on a really fun event for my pre-sale peeps. So what that means is I'm going to announce it here in the next probably few days what I'm working on. And if you purchase the book pre-sale, it's not once July 27th hits, it's not going to count. Um, but I'm doing a little something for folks who pre-buy, you know, do the pre-sale. Um, you're just going to need to show, you know, some type of proof. You'll have to send it to my email address. Um, I'm going to officially announce this, so don't worry. I'm just kind of giving you the inside scoop. Um, but you're going to have access to something pretty awesome. Um, I'm not going to say what, but just know that if you're thinking about picking up the book, uh, you definitely want to do it before July 27th because you will be able to access um, a little event that I'm going to have going on is a special thank you to everyone who 
um, purchase during pre-sale. So if you want to know about that, um, you want to be the first to know when I announce that. I'm going up here in this big, big leaf up here and adding some line work. You want to sign up for my email list. Uh, I call it the never annoying email list. Yes, I'm using a violet up here. I'm now mixing the violet with a dark like indigo. Um, my email list is not annoying. It is going to be used a lot more this month than it ever has. But if you want to be the first to know, for example, if you want to know when I launch the special event for those who bought the book on pre-sale, that's the place to be because there is going to be limited space for that situation. If you want to know exactly when my brushes launch on Amazon, because I do not have a launch date specifically. That's not how Amazon product launches work. They're very last minute. Um, a lot of factors go into when you can launch a product on Amazon. It is not something you can pre-plan to a specific date. So if you want to be the first to know when the brushes go on sale, sign up for that email list. Just go to artforjoysake.com, one S. That's the link in my bio here on TikTok and sign up. Just getting kind of into the nitty gritty here and adding some dark detail. I do like to add dark detail. Um, very sparingly, it can be such a like such a draw to the eye. Now, if you get too heavy-handed with it, and that can happen easily, it can be overwhelming. But look at that! Isn't that just lovely? Little little something something. I'm also going to go in because I'm not totally thrilled with what's going on down here with my accent flower and all these little leaves that I added. So I have an idea. Let's see what happens. Add little, little baby stems. Yeah, I kind of like that. Gives them a little bit more purpose. Yeah, okay. All right. That's what, yeah, that's nice. I like that. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Kind of connect all those elements. That's pretty. I can get down with that. The title of the book um, is um, How to Make Art for Joy's Sake. Free Spirited Watercolor. It's a freaking long title. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, oh, sorry. Um, it's How to Make Art for Joy's Sake. Here, I'm just going to show you. Free Spirited Watercolor. And we're going to move on to another painting. Here she is. So yeah, How to Make Art for Joy's Sake. Free Spirited Watercolor. If you just search me on Amazon, Christy Rice, or head to the link in profile here, Art for Joy's Sake 1S. Um, you will find it easily. Um, yeah, it always amazes me how the smallest details make an entire painting feel so different. Indeed, indeed, it, it's so true. It's so unbelievably true. That's why I always say your painting is never lost. You could be right around the corner from something really exciting and really redemptive in your painting, right? So never ever feel like your painting is lost because you just don't know. All right, I'm gonna paint on some black. I'm just, I'm sticking to a five by seven size for this series. Friends, if you're, if you just hopped on, I am, I'm recording. I've got two devices going tonight. It's a little bit crazy. And I am recording for a series that I'm doing on Instagram. And I kind of felt like my Instagram peeps were always kind of getting, you know, the shaft because I do everything here first. So I wanted to give my Instagram friends, oh wow, that's two, okay, there we go. 
I wanted to give my Instagram friends a little something special just for them first. Now, once I, you know, once I post it on Instagram, I have been bringing some of it over here. So, anyway, that's what we're working on tonight. Hey, Thomas, thank you so much. The leaves are blending so nicely. I think so. I think so. All right, I'm about to paint on black, so let's get ready for it. This is always fun. I'm going to spray down my palette again. It needs it. I'm going to show you quickly what I'm using if you're just, or if you're popping in and out. I know if you're like me, I pop in and out of lives all the time. This is my case for making handmade watercolor palette. I recently expanded this palette. I did a whole TikTok about it. And friends, I am using my Art for Joy Sake brush collection. Um, these are them. So I've got a flat wash brush, two daggers, a liner brush, um, a round brush, and a cat's tongue. And literally, friends, this is everything you need to create effortless, joyful, instinctive watercolor paintings. Very exciting. Uh, very excited about the launch of those coming up. Oh, yeah. All right, I think I'm going to do a rose. So let's get her done. I'm going to use the half inch, the forget rules brush. Oh, yeah. Let's see what rules we can break. <clears throat> Woohoo! Start recording. I'm going to use some gesso. Sorry. All right, let's get it going. I do a lot of rinsing of the brush when I'm incorporating gesso because I don't want to contaminate my watercolor palette with the gesso. see roses are always tricky I'm doing a side view never quite know I feel like when I'm painting roses I'm constantly making decisions constantly roses are a little more stressful for me and I feel like roses evolve very differently on the page unlike any other flower that I paint I don't know if that made sense but putting some line work in with my with this half inch dagger because it's got a lovely capable point on it definitely do some nice detailing work with it for sure
little bud. So I grab the watercolor and then I put a little bit of the gesso on my brush and I let them just mix on the page on my brush, on the page on my brush. right into some detail there because again this brush is capable you don't have to switch brushes that's another reason I love this particular combination of brushes I like to really minimize the amount of brush switching anything that could become a source of distraction in your painting session and also a source of stress and over the years what I've seen People ask me again and again, I don't know which brush to use for this part of the painting. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And there's just a very stress inducing um, to have to worry constantly about changing up your brush. So I created this set with that in mind and that you don't, you can take any one of these brushes and easily create an entire painting from it if you wanted to. Now just, oh, thank you, just purchased. Now just waiting for the beautiful brushes. You're so kind. Thank you. I can't wait for you to have it in your hands. And make sure you sign up for my email list so that, um, because you just purchased, so you're gonna have access to this really fun thing I'm gonna be announcing soon. Um, you're gonna be eligible for it, so. All right. bit of white on my brush. I'm going to load it up again. Just a teeny tiny bit. Ooh, it's a little thick. Actually, though, I like that. That thickness. A little something there. A little notch in there. Carry it down. Remove a little bit of that. I thought I was going to like that. I don't think I do. That little Bit that I added there. I'm going to take that away. There we go. There always comes a point, every painting I do, friends, every painting I do, where things feel a little messy, things feel a little disconnected, things feel a little unsuccessful, if you will. And we are at that stage, and it is O freaking K. Because what did I say when we first started? Don't ever feel like your painting is just a loss because you could be just moments away from a breakthrough moments away from oh my gosh did I just paint that did I actually do that I'm not kidding you so keep going or if you really don't feel like keeping going put it to the side come back to it tomorrow or next week, I don't care, but don't ever give up on your own artwork. More water on that brush. Don't ever give up.
pretty. All right, let's go back, fill in with some leaves. A little green on the brush, a little white. All right, let's see here. Go here. Come down here and come down there. Lovely. See, I'm talking to myself again. It's a good thing. Kind of feel like most things in life that are worthwhile, that make us feel good, that make us feel fulfilled, they require the development of habits. I don't know. Would you agree? I, I really think that's true. And habits kind of suck in the beginning because you're retraining your brain, you're retraining your mind to, to cooperate, you're retraining, you're training away certain habits, certain other habits. You're training one habit for another. It's a good thing. So get in the habit. Saying good things to yourself. Being kind to yourself. Talking to yourself up as you paint. Letting the paint run out a little bit. Just kind of letting it fade away into nothing. A little pink undertone for some leaves with a little bit of white. So basically I painted pink leaves. And then I'm going to go right over top with green. Each time I lay down the green, I'm going to rinse the brush to get a nice, bold, clean green down. See that? This is just another way to mix color on the page. Look at that. Gorgeous. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Now this bud is kind of getting lost here a little bit, so I feel like I need to zhuzh some of this pink and brighten it up. Oh yeah. How about them apples? Oh yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I clearly um, find joy in aging myself with my little my little sayings and things I come up with come off with. Does anybody know? What movie that's from? Um, let's see if I can remember what movie that's from. But I'm curious. Anybody? How about Them Apples? Them Apples? I don't know. Anyway, it's from a um, popular movie. I think it was early 2000s or I don't think it was the 90s. But it's a good one. And it's one of those lines that you'll always remember. And I'm having a hard time remember the name of the movie now. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Robin Williams, Matt Damon. I'm going to the cat's tongue. I'm going to get a little bit of darkness right in here. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, Goodwill Hunting. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Jess, it was just mixed with watercolor. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let me, I'll pull this away. I'm going to stop this one here. So first question, I am using Legion Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Black. So this is a black legit black watercolor paper. Yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff. Um, and 
what I do is I have a little dish. Clearly, I waste a lot. Gosh, it's still soft. Look at that. I waste a lot of gesso. It's bad. But I put a little gesso in here. And then I pull a little color from my palette, whatever it may be, say blue, and I take it in here and I blend, blend, load the brush, and paint. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna pull out the craft watercolor paper. That's right. Legion also has this. They're not calling this a craft watercolor paper, but it really acts. It's 100% cotton, so it acts like watercolor paper. So I'm gonna use that. What does what do? Sorry, I may have missed that. Oh gosh, I forgot about this one. I painted that ages ago. Hello, hello beauty. You pretty. Okay, but off, off you go. Now let me get this one out of the block and the gesso. The gesso is like a white acrylic. It's just nice and runny. So I use it uh, when I'm painting on black or colored paper um, to create contrast. So, but I mix it with watercolor because it works. It works. So um, I just try not to contaminate my watercolor palette. Where is my pencil? Um, because for obvious reasons, um, can really mess with the the state of your watercolors if you do. All right. Here we go. And. Get this one in the frame here. I'm gonna do something different. Experiment. It is fun. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. All right, now painting on craft. I have been, I've got two devices going tonight and I've been recording everything I'm painting for a special series that I have going on for Instagram. Right now, I am just using gesso. I thought that might be pretty. On the craft. And it is pretty. half inch dagger and I love how fine of lines I can get from it see that and then of course I can get the nice thick lines as well I love painting leaves that kind of twirl around each other and kind of figuring out those angles ah so satisfying very cathartic. It's a type of painting like you need to be present, but at the same time, it's low stress. You're just kind of curving and swirling around. See what I did there? Look at that. And it's a great way to practice leaves. It's a great way to challenge yourself to paint a variety of different leaf shapes. It's a wonderful way to get used to a new brush. So if you're picking up my brush set, um, and as a matter of fact, this is probably going to be one of the things that we do in the exclusive tutorial that all of my, my brush owners are going to have access to, is we're going to paint, um, we're going to do a leaf exercise that will help you kind of 
familiarize yourself with the power of each brush in the set. And then look, we can get real big and wiggling and twisting and look at all that character. With just one brush, just one. It's kind of turning into a fern and I love it. I'm gonna go up here, curve around, come back down, meet up with the stem. Oh yeah, I did. I'm gonna extend this one Find that one a little bit. Ugh. Oh my gosh, I can't even handle myself. Love it. And it's okay. It's okay for you to love it. It's okay for you to not pick apart every little moment that you don't like. Because trust me, friends, there are moments here that I'm not like completely jazzed about, but they're, they're insignificant. They don't matter. If I let them matter... Well, that's a different story. How much are you letting matter that doesn't deserve all the attention you're giving it in your artwork or in your life? There's so much that we honor that causes us stress. So much. I'm gonna do a little tone on tone. I'm gonna to start adding some detailing, but only with white. I'm gonna see how this goes. I have an idea in my head how it'll go. Okay, that's pretty. That's what I was thinking. That it would be a little, like you can see it, but it's not like in your face. All right. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, I like, I like. So you can tell I'm really focusing. I'm getting in the zone because I am not talking. Oh, sorry guys. I feel bad, <laughs> but I'm getting in the zone. My right brain takes over. I'm gonna do a little more curly leafiness up here. A little bit. Oh yeah. So I did drop a new YouTube video today, friends. I forgot to talk about it. Um, every Tuesday at noon. So go check that out. I'm actually painting in one of my first books, um, the Painterly Days watercoloring book, and I painted a page of poppy flowers, which are one of my favorite flowers on the planet. So, so it's a really, it's a nice real-time pace. So folks are already painting along with me and commenting. It's really fun. So you can head to the link in the profile here. If you want to check that out, just click on the YouTube button at artforjoysake.com and I'll take you right to my YouTube channel.
All right, sorry, questions. The Gesso, yes. Um, just pre-ordered your book, so excited for it to be here. Thank you, R. Bauer. Did you add water to the Gesso? I do as I go every once in a while. Yes, I will add a little water, but I don't like mix a batch with more water in it um, because sometimes I want less water, more water, just depending on like the thickness of the line that I'm after, if that makes sense. So yeah. I'm going to do another one. I like this craft paper so much. I haven't used it in a while. I'm going to draw a little 5 by 7 If you're wondering why I sound like a weirdo, because I have a brush in my mouth. Okay. And if you're just hopping on, friends, we already painted this together. I'm working on an Instagram series and so I'm filming all of this tonight. So I literally have two devices going. We did the lavender. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. I do sometimes paint watercolor on top of the gesso. Yeah, absolutely. It works. Um, it's a little bit like you can do it wet. You could do like a wet and wet with gesso. That's fantastic. I do that all the time but you could let the gesso completely dry and then go back on top with watercolor. Maybe we'll do that once this one that I just did, once this one has a chance to dry. Um, yeah, in fact, I think that would be wicked fun. Um, so if you're just hopping on, that's what we're working on. And here are some that I've been, that I've done before tonight. And these are gonna be exclusive. First look on Instagram, this is a series I'm doing a daily painting, a very aesthetic, calming painting. I'm not talking during them. Um, this one was posted today. They're being put on Instagram at Christy the Painter first, and then I'm bringing some of them over here to TikTok. This one, a little abstract landscape, a cactus, the strawberries. I loved this one. Had so much fun with that one. The rose. And then the, what are these called? Help me, the lanterns. Chinese lanterns. I've been getting a request. Um, someone's been requesting Chinese lanterns, so I finally did it. Um, and then earlier tonight, here, we did this one too. So you're all caught up. I'm gonna have to plug in because, hold on. All right, I'm gonna set the video up. All right, what should we paint next? I'm gonna switch palettes. I'm feeling like a different palette. Oh, what do I want? Oh, let's do core. My core palette, friends. Because this one likes to travel. Core watercolors really like to travel, and they do travel really beautifully in gesso. And since I'm still painting on the crafts, I think that's a fun thing for you to see. See how watercolor acts on top of gesso. Sure. Yeah, we're gonna go back to that. I'm gonna let this other one dry here, and we'll for sure go back to that. All right. Let's see. What do I want to do? What do I want to paint? I'm having a little bit of a like hung up. I don't know what I want to paint. Hmm. I think I'm going to do something complete. This might be a complete flop, friends. Like, utter flop. Alright? Really. This might be bad, but we're going to try it.
sketch first. Just stay with me. She's getting cray. Okay. I've got this Wedgwood vase sitting in front of me right now. And it's been inspiring me for a few days. And I haven't been brave enough to give it a whirl until now and see what happens Oop. kind of screwed up the shape there that's right so literally I'm mixing gesso and watercolor right on the page have a white paper flower in this vase. totally have my right brain engaged so I'm not talking much. Sorry friends. I'm going to correct the shape of that. Well, all right, let me not say correct. I'm going to refine the shape of that vase, but not quite yet. I'm going to show you the vase when I'm done here. It's literally um, a white magnolia made out of paper that one of my team members, we actually have them for sale on ChristyRice.com, so they're kind of meant to be like decor. And um, I saw it at the studio the other day. It was our sample. And I was like, you know what? Taking that bad boy home because she's just too pretty to be sitting on the side of the studio where nobody nobody's at, right? She's just too pretty. All right, let's get some Wedgwood. Oh, too much water on that brush. I'm going to get some of the Wedgwood detailing going. Actually, I want to exaggerate the shape of this face a little bit. And I know the, the blue is, is brighter than... Wedgwood is, but I don't care. It's pretty. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. She's moving. She's flowing. It's not terrible. And I'm going to do bright white first. I know Wedgwood detailing is not bright white. I know, I know. Don't come after me. I took the leap with this one and finally did it because I kind of dig it. Kind of dig it. Mm -hmm. oh, there is a little yellow center. I'm going to show you. 
And then we're going to go over top and tone down the bright white Wedgwood details. I've got like a, it's like an ivory watercolor in this set. Kind of similar if you've heard me or seen me use buff titanium. It's kind of like that also tone down the center of the flower. Bit, little bit. And then let's go in, let's see, what color do I want to use? Now, you were asking about watercolor over top of gesso. I'm doing that now. I'm literally just using straight up soft blue watercolor going right over top to add some line work. See how that works beautifully. I'm happy. I'm happy I did this. afraid. All right, so here is what my subject matter was. Zoom out. Sorry, I think we might have lost connectivity there for a minute. I'm sorry, friends. But this is what inspired me. See, little paper bloom. Isn't she pretty? And a Wedgwood vase. See that? Fun, right? Yay. All right, I'm gonna go back to this other one and show you how we can do washes and all sorts of things right over top of the gesso. Right over top. Thank you. Sorry. I'm trying to get this centered beautifully so you can see. Unplug. I'm I've got one plug for charging. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So one of the first things, um, so someone asked the question, can you go over top of the gesso once it's dry or, you know, wet on wet? And you certainly can. And look at how unbelievably gorgeous it is. It's the most lovely effect. It's still washy. You can still do wet on wet. Look at this, friend. Most lovely effect. It's still washy. You can still do wet on wet. Look at this, friends. Oh, I'm gonna be doing a YouTube vid vid about this one. I forgot how fun this is. Look at. Oh, <laughs> it's so good, right? It gives your Watercolor, just a really curious nature. It's, ah. Oh. Watch, watch, and then watch, watch. Wet on wet, right on top of that gesso. Ay, 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 so good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
that's a winner. I love it. Do you love it? It resists a little. Oh, but it still works beautifully. So good. It just, it's a whole other world when you lay down this gesso first and then go over top of it with watercolor. And then friends, you can leave some of it untouched. So leave it, you know, just the pure white that you laid down first. Um, you can go back in now with more, I'm going in with the liner, just pure watercolor, but I'm going in, look at, it's bleeding. Do you see that? It's still bleeding, it still works. Like all the beautiful qualities of watercolor still function. Look at that, oh yeah, it's so fun. Mm -hmm. So good. Yay! You have to try it. They do show. They do show. I love that they show. Yeah. I'm going to do a whole YouTube video about this, like a longer, because I think this is so freeing. It's a great way to pull yourself right out of a rut. And kind of look at that gesso kind of reactivated itself a little bit. Just is great. Why not? So fun. How do we feel about that, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. All right, friends, we're going to finish off the night with just one more. I'm going to go back to the white, go back to the standard, the old, old standby. But I'm going to stick with the core. Sorry, I'm adjusting my other camera. My shadows are really intense tonight. It's weird. I don't know why. prickly pear bloom so I'm gonna paint her real quick fast and loose
I'm really getting quiet now. I've been painting for too long, friends. I am fully in the right brain mode here. Apologize. I'm holding the bloom and kind of just looking down every so often. Oh, I always wondered where the prickly started on the prickly pear. Well, I just found out. Let me start way up high because I just got them in my finger. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. In fact, there's one on the page. You see that? Good times. I, I have been bludgeoned by prickly pear more times in my life than I care to admit because I'm like a moron. I've put my hand down right in them. I've sat in them. I've, I'm pretty sure my daughter's diaper bag still has some of them on there from her trip to Utah like over a month ago. I'm very careless when it comes to the pricklies. <laughs> and that's what I call them, the pricklies. The flower though, I'm gonna hold it by the petal has these lovely like green spines or details in the actual petals that are just so iconic and gorgeous. She's pretty and I wanna keep it loose and effortless feeling. So I'm gonna try not to paint for too long here on this one. This is something else you can do is talk yourself through like what, when you start to paint, you don't have to have all the plans and all the, all the um, answers, but as your painting evolves and you like the direction it's heading, like I right now like this kind of easy breezy vibe that I've got going. So I'm gonna talk myself through how I'm going to keep that going. And for me, that's don't get don't do too many details. Don't paint for too long. You know, talk yourself through your plans as they evolve. I'm not saying you have to have a plan when you start. You know me. I don't often have plans. I don't sketch ahead of time and all that jazz. But I do like as my painting evolves, let me put a little hint of a cactus there. As my painting evolves, I like to listen to my painting. What's working? What feels good? Talk yourself through it. I'm still effortless here, but I gotta get out soon. Or it's not gonna feel very effortless anymore, all right? different greens going and carry them down through use this opportunity to further shape some of those petals a little bit of detailing there oh yeah still good a little bit more of a notch there uh-huh and since we learned that the pricklies start there right at that point in the flower, we're gonna add them. We're gonna remember, we're gonna commemorate me being attacked yet again by prickly pears. <laughs> My heavens. Oh, she pretty. All right, now in my head, I'm like, I, I wanna add this one more thing, but I don't know if I should, but I'm gonna go for it. It might be a mistake. It might be something I wish I hadn't done. Going in real heavy. Not a lot of water on my brush right now, friends. It's like I want this painting to speak of, okay, this is a cactus something or other, but I don't want it to scream cactus. Right? This is like elegant cactus, I think. Okay, I'm walking away. I can always come back, I can always do more, but right now, I am walking away. Yeah, oh no. 
No, I often don't color the background. Mm -mm. I often build the background as part of the composition. Um, this particular one, I'm really trying to exercise self-control. Oh, a few more people hopped on. Hey, friends. Just painting, painting. I'm actually filming for an Instagram series, so make sure you follow me over on Instagram. I'm going to hang out for a little bit since a few more of you popped on. Um, oop. Hold on, another prickly. Where was she? There she is. Bye bye, you. Oh, good lord. Nope, there's another. Oh my gosh, I'm being attacked. <laughs> Once I was hiking and I literally, I kind of like fell, like just kind of fell back on my butt and I put my hand. My palm of my hand right in a cactus. And it took like an extra hour of the hike to pick it all out to the point that I could actually function. Yeah. <laughs> Too funny. Ugh, I really, this is my favorite one of the night, friends. I gotta be honest. Oh my God, I didn't film a bit of that. I never started the, I never started filming that one. Okay, we gotta do another one. Cause I never filmed any of that by accident. All right, let's do another one. You know, it's not the first time I've done that when I start to film and I'm like all excited and I get really into a painting and I never started the cam. I never started the video. I cannot tell you how many times I've done that. But let's start another. I'm gonna try not to get a prickly in my hands this time. All right. Camera is rolling, rolling, rolling. Start up a little higher. yourself through. More green. That's okay. It's okay. Nothing wrong with more green. here. You can see what I'm working from, this little bad boy. And he is a bad boy because he attacked me with his prickles. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, you know, was mishandling a cactus like an idiot. <laughs> double checking that I'm actually recording this time for the love and I am all right let's go up here and do a little little cactusy moment okay that's a bright green I don't think I used quite that bright of a green the first time around but
sorry I'm so quiet, friends. I've been painting too long. I said it before, I'm kind of like fully in that like artist right brain. Can't pull myself out of it easily. I didn't do this in the last one. Adding some unexpected red, but I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. Go back in here. Let's try it a little bit, a little bit more detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I did do that last little bit. Over on this other side. Did I just get another prickly in my finger? For the love. Christy Rice. Get it together. If you're just hopping on, I was telling the story of how um, I feel like I've had more than my fair share of cactus interactions. But this is because I don't honor the cactus at pick up the cactus, I fall into them, I'm like, I'm just a mess. There's parts of this one I actually like better than the last. to cut this off. I've been paint I feel like I've been painting for over an hour. A little bit of pink. All right, time to get out. Time to stop. One more thing. I'm just looking at the first one. You know, the one that I s forgot to stop to start the record. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my god, I totally have prickly pear in my fingers still. Um, I remember you created shadows on the lemon with the hues of purple. Would you do that with this? So I decidedly didn't because there's so much green undertone in this flower. I just use the green as my shadows because this flower just naturally has a ton of Look at that, of green undertone. So that's um, what I decided to do with that one. Yeah, but great question. I keep missing the beginning. What time are you starting Tuesday evenings? Oh, I wish I could say that I always do live on Tuesday evenings, um, but I don't. Um, I really, really need to pick a time and stick to it, which I'm so bad at. Um, and it's usually, it's because of my kiddos. I actually started much earlier tonight than I normally do. I was live by like, I think 10.30 tonight, um, which rarely happens. So here they are. Let's just zoom out here and get all of the beauties from tonight. But don't worry, I'm gonna put this on YouTube like I do all the others. Oh, we did this tonight, I forgot. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get all of these in screen here. This one, we did the leaves. I can't, I can't get them all on the screen. Um, we did quite a few tonight. Lavender. And what was this? Oh, the zinnia. Oh my gosh, how could I forget? The zinnia. And there they all are. And there's one off screen even. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six. We did six. Life happens and you don't miss anything. No, but, you know. All right, friends, I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. 
thank you for being here with me. Please make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel because you're going to be able to see this whole live again. Be able to stop, start, rewind, all the things, pause. Um, and then also sign up for that email list so you know what's coming and when. I really, y'all have been so supportive over the last six months. You are the reason I'm doing a lot of what I'm doing and I want you to be the first to know um, when this brush set is, is coming. And actually, let me show this again. Um, I got the Real Deal sample in the mail recently. Um, like literally, it has the skew and everything. And let me show you what the brushes actually look like. Because my first sample, the brushes were not the rose gold that they were supposed to be. There they are. There they are. Look at that rose gold. Isn't that gorge? And then there's the back with my new logo. Yay. There they are. All right, so I get asked every day, multiple times a day, when are the brushes launching? I don't know, I won't know, probably until a day or so before I have enough in stock to launch them. It's just the nature of Amazon product launches. Um, so sign up for the email list because you will be the first to know. All right, thank you so much, friends. Have a fantastic night. Thank you for being here. This was such a blast, and I'll see you next time. So long.